Okay, so write the overall equation for the reaction of bromine and methane. So eventually when we have a lot of different organic chemistry reactions, you're going to need to try to recognize what kind of reaction you're dealing with based on the starting materials in most cases. So with methane, I know I have an alkane. And with bromine, I know I have a halogen. And so that's a clue that what we're going to be making is a combination of these two things, which is a halogenoalkane. So a halogenoalkane is just a molecule that ha is an alkane with at least one halogen on it, in this case, bromine. So that means our starting material is methane, CH4, which we should be able to come up with uh, either just from memorization or with the alkane general formula, one carbon. We're going to add bromine to it, which is Br2, the diatomic element form of bromine. And this is a free radical substitution reaction. So that means we're going to substitute one of the hydrogens, dropping the H number down to three, with a bromine. That other hydrogen leaves and bonds with the second bromine atom. So this is the overall equation for the reaction between bromine and methane. The conditions necessary, I remember that radical surfer dudes are out there catching their UV light, their UV rays. So that is the condition necessary for the reaction to occur. A free radical is a species with an unpaired electron. And homolytic fission is what happens in the initiation step of this mechanism, which is when a bond splits and both of the atoms come away with one electron. So it splits the same. So uh, let me write that out. So bond breaking, each atom gets one electron from the bond pair. The name of the reaction is substitution, and the mechanism type is free radical. So altogether, we refer to this reaction as free radical substitution. If I'm going to write it out in steps, the first step always involves the halogen being split by the ultraviolet light into the halogen radical. So now I draw the dot to indicate the unpaired electron, to indicate the free radical. Then I take one of those bromine radicals created in the first step, and I show it reacting with the alkane. The hydrogens are on the outside of the alkane, so the bromine will run into them first when they collide, and so that will form HBr, and it will leave behind CH3, but the CH3 will end up being unpaired. On the left-hand side, you can see total you have one unpaired electron, so afterwards you will still have one unpaired electron. That's how this reaction keeps happening and happening and keeps propagating. The second propagation step, you should take the radical that you formed in the first one, and you should show that reacting with another Br2 molecule, because realistically, there would be more than one bromine molecule around in the reaction container. So what you're trying to show is that the radical created by the first propagation step can go on to react with an yet another bromine molecule. That's going to rip the bromine molecule in half to form the halogenoalkane that we said we were going to form in the first part of the question. And that leaves behind one bromine atom as another radical. So we're right back where we started at the beginning of the first propagation step. And that implies that this could go on and on and on until you run out of one of your reactants. A termination step is one where you begin with two different radicals, or just two radicals. They don't have to be different. And because I have two unpaired electrons, if they come together, I'll actually end this mechanism because there'll be no more radicals. So the termination step always begins with two different radicals or two radicals and ends with no more radical. So an alternative termination step would be like if two different methyl radicals came together and then you'd form ethane, C2H6. But in general, the initiation, propagation, propagation, termination, it's pizza party time. Um, you form two radicals, you use one of those and create another. You use that radical to create 
you get another and you're right back where you started. And then termination is two radicals becoming no radical. The structural formulas of two other possible products when methane undergoes free radical substitution, well, I've already sort of drawn one because the, the intended product is this thing here, this bromomethane. That's kind of what we said at the beginning. We knew we were going to make uh, bromomethane. That's the halogenoalkane. So that's kind of what we expect to make. The HBr is another product um, that we make, but we expect that. So some of the other ones that we can form are ethane. We've shown in our termination steps up here. And you, you don't even have to write one of these termination steps, but this is an alternative one you could use. So C2H6 is another product, another organic product that could form in this reaction if these two methyl groups met each other uh, and reacted, they would form ethane. Another product that you can form is that um, when you make this uh, bromine radical, once, or once you start making some of these uh, bromomethane molecules, if they're still in the container, then what can happen is that the, the other bromine radicals can actually collide with that. You can rip off additional hydrogen and eventually you make a different radical and eventually that thing can react with more bromine and so you can substitute additional bromine atoms on to that same uh, halogenoalkane. So another possible product would be this dibromomethane and then also tribromomethane and even tetrabromomethane. They're all possible products because this mechanism is sort of hard to control, uh, and because these radicals are so reactive, you can the radicals can continue to react with the halogenoalkane that you formed to make other halogenoalkanes. So in terms of answering this question in particular, we could draw this, and that would satisfy a structural formula of another possible product. Um, but it's possible to continue to substitute hydrogen with bromine up to tetrabromomethane in this, in this uh, example. So that's one of the ideas of the free radical substitution. Uh, it takes place. It is a, a mechanism that takes place between halogens and alkanes, and the main organic product that it produces is a halogen or alkane. However, it's not a very good uh, mechanism if you were like in a lab and this was the reaction that you wanted to run. It's not that useful because there are so many byproducts, so many other products that are possible. We've just circled three um, that usually the purity of your uh, main halogen alkane, in this case bromomethane, is not very high. So this is a, a type of question you could get. Overall equations, conditions, um, naming mechanisms and types of reactions, and then actually drawing out mechanism steps for the reaction itself.